Hello everybody again. This is Joseph and today we're going to go over Toyota Camry. And we're going to go over power seats. Excuse my voice because I'm a little under the weather. But as we look at the diagram and we're familiar with diagrams of power seats, I made a video about uh we could go about Toyota's Paseo and Celica about 20 years ago more than that. And the interesting part is, everything is the same. Now, the question is, first of all, one thing we don't see here are relays. Another thing, if you look at the schematic, we don't see any voltage dropping resistors. Why is that? If you remember my other videos, when I talked about blower motor, there was a blower resistor. The reason for a blower resistor is to reduce the speed or increase the speed of the motor, which is the blower motor. If you notice over here, like I pointed out, there is no resistor, voltage dropping resistor over here, none whatsoever. <clears throat> and that's because we're not concerned about speed. There's only one speed. We're not, we don't want to increase or decrease the speed. Therefore, full 12 volts will go to all of these motors that are activated by the switches that you activate, the driver or the passenger. There are no relays over here. You see there are no relays over here. There's no integration relay module, which is very popular with Toyotas, which go bad, pretty, pretty common, obviously. There's no need for relays. The ground is over here. And... The power comes over here. So there's no reason to have a control circuit of a relay. The less parts that you manufacture, the cheaper it is. You don't want to manufacture so many parts. That's why the chip replaced all the resistors and everything and transistors. Everything wants to be compact. Now, to begin our tutorial, I'm going to have two parts of it. <clears throat> As you see, we always start at the battery, hot at all times. Now, the photography is a little tough because it's nighttime. Power seats for fusible link. And this is located on instrument panel, junction box, left end of dash. And there's two fuse boxes usually, one under the hood and one under the dashboard for accessories. If we proceed, always follow the arrows that I have illustrated. We're going to go here, current flows. Remember, current flows. Voltage does not flow. Current flows in this path. C2 light green wire, and now the wire becomes white because there's a connector that changes it. So therefore, it's not the same color wire because it went through a connector. But it's not really a main point, just to point it out. The main point is the components. Always concentrate on components. We come over here, we come to a node. It's called a node, pin 8 over here. Now, if you come over here, you see we have a branch that could go over here. We could go a branch for the current to go in this way. Which path do we take? Well, we're discussing right now this one. Left front power seat sliding position motor. This is what we're activating, the switch that we are activating. So current again, current comes down here. It can flow here, it can flow here, it can flow up here. It can flow up here. If we take this path, we're going to the lumbar support motor. Are we interested in this? No. Do we activate the switches? No. Therefore, we have nothing to do with this branch right now. We will follow this branch, the pink. Remember, I put letters now for contact because I got an email from someone about how to understand where the contacts are so even though the schematic does not label contacts I put contacts over here like A, B, C, D, E, F and I will refer to those by letters so we come down over here one more time here this we activated the switch in this position this is at rest position when we activate it it goes from g to h instead of i so the current will flow in this way come out pin two go into pin one follow the pink come up here now the switch we did not activate the switch for front 
We all, only for rear. Therefore, the position is at rest position, original position. Therefore, the current will flow up here, flow up here. Again, we have two paths to go. Are we interested in that? That we activate the switches for those? Well, let's follow the path anyway. Now, if we would go this way, follow the path to see, go over here, go over here, go over here, go over here in the rest position, and we come back out here. Doesn't make sense. We can't do that. We can't go up here and up here at the same time. So therefore, we take this path. We follow the path, follow the path from 11 over here, over here, depending if you have a seat heater with or without, doesn't matter. We go over here, we go over here, we go over here, follow it, and we come to ground. So a motor has to be go connected to ground. So whenever we don't know which path to take, we always look for if we have 12 volts over here, Somehow this end has to be connected to ground and we have to concentrate on the path taking us to ground, which is this one. If it would be the other way, it would be this way. Let's say we, we put the, the, um, the, the switch for front in the active position. Right now, this is connected to G and I contacts. We activated this switch for front. We're talking about sliding position. Therefore, remember the current flows the same as we just mentioned. Current will not go this way. Why? Because now this is an open circuit and the switch is connected from G to I. Not good for us. We have to find a path, a complete path. Let's go this way. Okay, let's go. Can we go this way? No, it's open. Let's try this path. Remember, we activated the switch. For now, the switch is not connected from J to uh, K or L. It, it's connected from J to M, as in Mary. So see the green? That's why I made it green. Now the current will flow in this path. We have a complete circuit, or at least a branch that we can flow, current can flow. Follow the green. Follow the green because I couldn't overlap two different colors. And the point I want to make, you'll see, is that current will flow here. Now we're going the opposite direction of the motor. So look at this. Before we were going in this direction, if you recall, with the red. Now we're going in the other direction. So we're using the same motor, but we can switch directions of the motor depending on where the switch is. So one motor can do two activities. So we're going to go over here, come out here, right? Where do we go? We're going to go over here. As we said, we go to the green. We're going to go over here, go over here, follow the pink, back to ground. So therefore, as you see, this almost like bi-directional. One directional turn and it'll turn in the other direction depending on the position of the switch. And therefore, what's interesting, and I'm gonna make another video because you see I'm already uh, eight minutes already into this video, and what I meant, what to, to mention is an important point. This ground is common to all these motors. Hint, let me mention that again. This ground is common to all of these Meaning, if you have a problem with all these motors don't work, besides being the fuse and this connecting connector, this wire, it could be this ground over here from 11 to here. Why? Because it's common to all. Now, as I just mentioned, the motor could go in either direction. Therefore, if you go over here, when it's connected over here, you follow the red, and I put here a red line, this will be 12 volts on this side of the motor. The other side is connected to ground, it'll be zero volts. But what's more interesting is if you go and you connect this, now you follow the green line, guess where the green line is? Now I'm on 12 volts on this side, I'm on zero volts on the other side because I'm connected to ground. So at 
very interesting this schematic is that this motor could be either way it could flip-flop it could be 12 or it could be zero or it could be zero or it could be 12 depending on which switch you have activated as i said i'm gonna make another video on the other ones it's very complicated and i hope you enjoyed it tune in for the other one part two thank you